Hey guys, Sunny CA Reef here. Um, so, like I promised, making a part two of the update number whatever. Uh, tanks looking good. Yellow Fiji leathers opened up. Definitely my favorite coral. Been playing with the settings on the camera, and I got the white balance like this. So, it's definitely not what everything looks like. But it's pretty close. I mean, everything's a lot more fluorescent and bright than, you know, not so drab. Now it's a little white washed out instead of blue. But uh, today's main focus is on my equipment, not so much on the fish. Um, so, let's get started. I'm going to start with the lighting on this tank. Uh, to start off, this is a kind of unique lighting. It's a two fixture. Uh, each is 108 watts, 48 inches long, uh, that they connect together. They're kind of meant to do that, so you can, you know, add one or two. You can only have one if you have a Fowler. So that's 216 watts for a 55-gallon tank um, that isn't too deep. Only SPS is right there, and it's a Monipora, so, I mean, I'm good. I've seen extremely good growth from that so far. And everything else loves the light. Uh, my bulbs, I've got an actinic bulb, a Fiji blue bulb, a 10,000K white, and another actinic blue. I want to change this one to an aqua blue plus, and this one to a, like a pure, um, shoot, what's it called? Pure actinic or something by API. I don't know the names, but I'm going to get those bulbs eventually. Um, Here's just a little look at what the stuff looks like from the side. Looks pretty cool. Um, so that's my light fixture. And back here you'll see my CPR, hang on back, large uh, aquafuge. Uh, it's got some live rock in there that just wouldn't fit into the new aquascape. So I crunched it up and dropped it in there. Um, just some frag plugs in there. Back there you can see my Catomorpha. It's got this red stuff growing on it. Don't really care about that. It's not problematic. Got this other kind of like real thick hair algae almost growing on the side. Catomorpha is doing really well. I uh, haven't seen a lot of algae growth in the tank besides the back. But I haven't, I haven't cleaned the back in a month and that's all so I'm pretty happy about that um, lighting for the aquafuge is this Coralife uh, two bulb power compact just straight white definitely plenty of light for this little uh, refugium and these bulbs these fixtures are made by Aquatic Life back here you'll see this intake and outlet right here, that's for my Fosban reactor, which is right here. Um, right now I'm just, I'm running the Fosban, uh, the, whatever you call it, the Fosban pellets. And I'm thinking about switching to Roafos, because I've heard really great reviews from that. Phosphate levels haven't dropped to where I want them to, they're still a little high. Um, so if you have any experience with that, I know, I think New York Stilo made a video about them, but just if there's any other implications and stuff, uh, if you could let me know, that'd be great. Uh, to the left here, you'll see my protein skimmer. It's a uh, CPR, hang on back, um, geez, what happened to my camera? CPR, hang on back, Aero Force protein skimmer. Uh, it's rated up for 75 gallons. Again, this is a 55 gallon tank. Uh, it's really great protein skimmer. It's got a lot of quality skimmate that it pulls out. Uh, it does have a little problem with um, micro bubbles, but if my camera will focus. Right here, I've got a sponge down here, like a filter pad. I'm running a bag of carbon, activated carbon, and it comes with this sponge right here. And you can adjust, you know, the water flow in and out, but I like it where it is and that kind of reduces the micro bubbles all that kind of stuff that I shoved in there uh, plus I've got my little power head right here pointed straight at the outlet of the protein skimmer 
And I really don't have a problem with air bubbles. My water level is just a little low right now. Uh, so that's about it for equipment. My lights are on this two-part timer right here. You can't see that, so I'll just move. Uh, it's on the two-part timer. The uh, This is the daytime light right here. This is nighttime. It's running the Fiji uh, purple and the um, the echinic bulb, and it looks a lot more uh, blue and purple in real life. But you know that's nighttime, and those bulbs run 12 hours, and the daytime bulbs run 10 hours. Uh, so the echinic bulbs are on an hour before and an hour after. Um, the refugium runs counter that so when the lights in here turn off the lights in there turn on that way it kind of counters you know the algae when the algae can't grow because it's all dark then the macro algae and the the stuff that we want back in the refugium can grow so it, you know balances that out um, coral wise the montipora it's looking good. All that slime stuff is gone. It'll do fine. All the fish are out because they think they're getting fed. Um, Fish-wise, for the future, I'll definitely be try to be getting a six-line wrasse. Um, and something else I'll talk about in a second. But before I do that, I'll be adding a bunch of corals. Kind of build up the reef a little bit. Um, and... I'm going to start dosing some calcium and alkalinity. I've been watching the levels and they've been fine for where I'm at right now, but once you start uh, start adding a lot more corals, I'm definitely going to be adding that. So I'll, I'll make a little dosing system and I'll show you the details. Um, so livestock wise, uh, you know, I said I want a six line ras because I've seen on these zoos some purplish green, so I don't have a tripod, these purplish green almost flatworms and I know the wrasses eat the flatworms and I love the six line um, I don't know what I'll be doing with the chromis, I'll probably just keep him because everyone likes him he's really daring uh, he, was, he was actually the first to uh, swim out into the new rocks um, so I'll be getting the six line and my sister and me uh, we both love snowflake eels, and I know that's a little, whoa, an eel, but uh, my only problem is this, wide open top, you can jump out. I could make some sort of DIY net to go over the top, and if I did, I would definitely show that to you guys. It'd be really cool, you know, have a snowflake eel in the reef tank, the, my, the store that I go to, Aquatic Warehouse, if you're in the southern San Diego area. Great store, check them out. Extremely reputable, great quality, great prices. Just a little shout out to them. They also have a Facebook page, you can check that out. Um, but their, their snowflake eels there are extremely peaceful. They're small. Uh, they're tank raised, so, you know, um, it'd be a great addition. I don't think it'd be problematic at all. They're reef compatible. They have one in a display tank, I think that is you know it, it has no problems so those are my just to give you guys a little insight on livestock plans and stuff like that uh, but I'll definitely be adding tons more corals uh, and I'll document the growth on them and um, if you have any questions about you know uh, placement of corals what works best for corals what kind of corals to get, you know, just let me know because I'll be experimenting with that uh, being new to all of this stuff so you can use me kinda as a guinea pig the one I'm kinda thinking about right now is this branching frog spawn right now it's kinda in a higher current zone as you can tell but I, I guess it likes it, I mean it's opened up probably more than I've ever seen it open up um, so, and this uh, yellow leather, if you're having any problems with leathers, move it into high water flow. They love it. So, he opened up a lot. 
Uh, so that's just future plans. You know, the six line, maybe a snowflake eel, if I can fix the top. And I am over 10 minutes, so I gotta go, like, now, in case you guys actually want to watch the video. So look for future updates, subscribe, and all that crap. See you guys later.